بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الأكرمين معي في هذه الجلسة المفتوحة المفكر الأمريكي المسلم الأستاذ ياسين قصته طويلة لن ندخل فيها كاعتناقه للإسلام ولكن سندخل مباشرة لأنه مفكر باحث اجتماعي جوال قارئ يحلل المجتمع ويحلل العلاقات المتشنجة المتصارعة في العالم ندخل معه مباشرة في الموضوع فنسأله السؤال الذي شبه تقليدي لكن بالنسبة للمفكر لن يكون تقليديا ألا وهو أولا مرحبا شيخ ياسين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته أنت صالك 45 سنة مسلم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله أستاذ ياسين اليوم نحن أمام عالم عربي واسلامي ضعيف متراجع حضاريا فيه مشاكل سياسيه الدماء تنزف داخليا فيه الصوره مظلمه للعالم الاسلامي وهو ضعيف في كل المجالات العسكريه سياسيه تربويه اجتماعيه وهناك عالم متطور اوروبا وامريكا الشماليه وامريكا متطور اقتصاديا منتصر عسكريا عنده حقوق انسان مجتمع قانوني مدني كيف مثلك أمريكي من مجتمع متطور يعتنق الإسلام لماذا الغرب يقبل على الإسلام رغم من ضعف المسلمين وانتصار الآخر في كل المجالات في الحياة هذا السؤال لما تجيبه أنت يختلف عن إجابة غيرك لأنك مفكر أفهمك الحمد لله What I understood uh, you to ask and may Allah reward you شيخ إن شاء الله is that um, how is it with the picture of the Muslims they are weak They are fragmented. They are uh, not progressive. Uh, they have very dark picture. Uh, they're seeming like they are not developing. Uh, but in the West, they are very uh, energetic and they are developing. They seem to have all the institutions and all the resources. So why would someone become a Muslim who's in the West when he looks at the picture of the Muslims in their countries? I think this is what you ask me. Is this correct? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh is in the very simple way. Why do we need salt on our food? Why do we want sugar in our coffee? Why do we like to hear some kind of uh, maybe rhythm, you know, uh, poetry? Why, you know, something that we like the fragrance of a flower? Why we like the, the taste of, uh, of the, the apple? Why? Because it gives something to the senses. It brings life to the food. It gives feeling to the heart and to the spirit. And today, Muslims, they lost the spirit of Islam. Muslims is just like rock and stone and wood. There's something from the past. They have the language, mashallah. They, they still have the culture, mashallah. They, on the outside, you can still see the, you can see the remnants of Islam. But on the inside, the Muslims do not have the creativity. The Muslims, they lost the energy. The Muslims lost the clear thinking. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his sunan, the, and the sunan of Allah never changed. When the Muslims reached that stage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he opened the door of Islam for another people who have the spirit feeling. When they smell Islam, when they taste Islam from the sources, 
when they see the dynamism of the Sunnah, when they see the power of the Quran, it gives them the fragrance. And even though they see the condition of the Muslims, because of what they're feeling, they bypass and they become Muslims. And after sometimes 20 years, 30 years, they become the leaders of Islam. They will not become, they will not become the, 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 the custodians of the Haramain. No. Allah, he give the custody of the Haramain to the Saudi people or to the Arabs there in the Jazeera al Arab. Nobody will get that because Allah, he give that to them. They're not going to become the ones who, who are the, uh, the, the keepers of the language. No, Allah, he give the keepers of the language to the Arabs. He give that to them. So Allah, he give to the, to the Arabs something and nobody can take it from them. Zamzam belong to the people of Mecca. Mm. You know, when the... Uh, when our mother Hajara, when she discovered the Zamzam in the story, when she discovered the Zamzam and she was sitting with her son, they was drinking from the Zamzam. Then some Arab uh, tribe men, they came and they said, oh lady, can we get some of that water? She, she, she said to them, yeah, it's mine. You will have to pay me because this belonged to her. See how she answered even though they are men and they can just take it. But because she answered in such a dignified way, they just said, thank you, they paid her. Why? Since that time, Zamzam belonged to who? The Arabs. The, the, the Kaaba is under their custody. The Haramain under their dominion. Because Allah, he want to protect the Haramain. Allah, he want, you know, mean the Hujaj to, to drink from the Zamzam. So Allah, he give that to them. Secondly, Allah, he wants to protect the Quran. So he gives the Quran to a people who have the language to protect it. But the spirit of Islam is not like the Kaaba. The spirit of the Islam is not like the Zamzam. The spirit of Islam is not like Haramain. The spirit of Islam is flowing from one generation to another. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yahdi man yasha wa yudhillu man yasha. And Allah, he give his barakah to whomever he please. And Allah, he promised in the Quran that if some people who is holding the Quran and having the knowledge, if they do not, if they do not perform the da'wah, if they do not perform the work, Allah will change them and replace them with another people. If we need the essential thought that I hear from the most of the who have been Why did I say I بين واقع المسلمين حال المسلمين مم. وبين الإسلام كتاب مم. سنة سيرة محمد صلى الله مم. عليه وسلم أنتم قرأتم الكتاب السنة السيرة فصلتم ليس المسلمين مم. إسلام صحيح because Islam is different from Muslim the Islam is the source Muslim is only a result so Allah سبحانه وتعالى He's not concerned about those who drank from the river. Allah, he keep the river pure. If those people who took from Islam early, they leave it in their behavior. Allah, he calls some other people to drink from the Quran, some other people to drink from the Sunnah, and then Allah, he lift them up. After the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left, five generations after that, Allah, he gives Islam to the non-Arab. So, you know, Imam Bukhari, uh, Imam Muslim, huh? Not, not Arab. Yes. So Allah, He give to a people based upon their sincerity. And, and what I understand about Islam in my small knowledge and as I'm experiencing, is that what Allah, He gave one people is theirs, but not the spirit. The spirit of Islam keep flowing and it go from one people to another. And we can see, subhanAllah, see, see Muhammad Qasim. Muhammad Qasim, he was only 17 years old. When he conquered India, 17, like who? Like the son of Osama bin Zaid. See, Allah, he don't give to the older one. He don't give to Khalid Sorry. ibn Walid. Khalid ibn Walid, he have what he have. But the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put as the Amir of the Jaish, Osama bin, because Allah, he want the young people. The young people have the energy. And if they have the knowledge and they have the energy, Wallahi, they will take Islam every place. Ustaz Khalid, I don't want to cut your message,
أريد أن أسأل السؤال الحيوي مم. علي عزة بيجوفيتش المفكر الكبير الذي جمع بين السياسة والاجتماع والعلم ورئيس دولة مم. ورئيس دولة البوسنة yes, علي عزة بيجوفيتش في كتابه العظيم yes. الإسلام بين الشرق والغرب يقول يجب على المسلم أن يغير استراتيجيته صحيح. وتفكيره في الدعوة صحيح. فن الدعوة لغير المسلمين صحيح. صحيح. ما هو التحدي؟ yes. okay. الله خير. Check, I read that book uh, and he said that if the Muslims, the Muslims must change their strategy of da'wah according to the dynamics of the civilization in which they are living. <coughs> if Muslims is giving da'wah based upon the dynamics of another society, it will not work in this society. So this is what I'm telling the young people. We have to use contemporary language. And we have to use a language which the people of this society will understand. We have to use contemporary situations. We have to use relevant language. We cannot use the language of the people in a dormant society. If somebody said to me, Sheikh, who is your teacher? I can tell them my main teacher, his name is Sheikh Khalid Al Halwani in Mecca. <laughs> okay. But to a European, what does this mean? So I tell them, me, I have many teachers and I have many sources of knowledge. I'm reading from Bloomberg magazine, uh, Fortune magazine, or Harvard Law Review, Wall Street Journal, Times Weekly, okay, uh, uh, all the, the, uh, the, the, the economists, these magazines. <coughs> so the contemporary information which I'm, 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 I'm getting is from these sources. Where are those sources from? The major sources of the Western media and the Western universities. Now they're going to respect what I have to say. Of course, me, I'm taking from the sources, Quran and Sunnah, from the, uh, from the Umahat al-Qutb. But I have to deliver it to people, not in that language, not in that way. I have to deliver it to them in a way from sources which is familiar to them. So, Sheikh, uh, in my estimation, the young people, the Muslims today, who's living in the West especially, three things they need if they want to move forward. Mm. We, we don't say for their Iman. For their Iman, they need Quran and Sunnah, good Aqidah, good teachers, all of this here. They need to perform the Arukan al-Islam, Arukan al-Iman, all of this here. But if they want to be effective, if they want to be respected, if they want to be progressive, three things they have to do. One. One, they must develop a life plan. Mm. Not education. Education, not life plan. Education is institutional programming to prepare you for participation in a society. This is education. And they should have education. But life plan is something different. It is that you write, you research. And after you research, you write, and you think, you put your plan. Where you want to be in five years, where you want to be in 10 years, and how you will achieve that. This is life plan. Now. Sheikh, it is already proven that someone who has a life plan and education and someone that has education, the one who has life plan will wind up in leadership because they have vision. The second thing they need to do, they need to do what's called career enhancement. Career enhancement. That means maybe you are a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're an engineer, maybe you are a software engineer, maybe you are a uh, carpenter, maybe you are a builder, you are a teacher, or whatever you are, that's good. But you need to study other things to enhance your career. You need to take other courses that will enhance your career. You need to take courses in business, okay, in language, in speaking, in writing, in development, uh, to study sociology and to study history. So when you take these enhancement courses, Maybe an enhancement course will be three months or six months. Mm. So in a five-year period of time, if you take five enhancement courses and someone else studied the same discipline as you, you'll find yourself in front. Number three, okay. they need to understand what are the dynamics of required for leadership. Leadership training. Because how are they going to adopt responsibility if they're not leaders? Mm. You know, the Prophet wasalam, he predicted that Usama bin Zayd will be the leader of the Jaish. Yes. 
Why? Because Osama was always with the Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was providing him with leadership. Secondly, who was the father of Osama? The father of Osama Zaid. was Zaid. Huh. And he was also disciplined man, devoted man. So, Sheikh, if our children are not being trained for leadership, then they're being trained for following. A leader is not, you don't get leaders from education. You get leaders from cultivation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, you zakki him. Well, you rabbi him. No, just, no, just purify their hearts. No, just teach them the knowledge. Well, you rabbi him. No, to, just ma'lumat. Huh, no, no, in akhlaq, in their behavior. A deen al mu'amala. And a deen is makhluk. You see, so I, I believe, Sheikh, that if a, if a person is well educated, has a life plan, a person also does career enhancement, he has good knowledge of the world and the society. Secondly, he's trained as a leader and he has good behavior. He has good behavior and he is uh, disciplined in his Islam. He will become a leader and even non-Muslims will not mind to follow him. Sheikh Khalid, كلامك متسلسل ومتكامل وواقعي لكن أدركني الفاصل إنه كمل بعد الفاصل. المفكر الأمريكي المسلم خالد ياسين المرأة ثم المرأة ثم المرأة هناك لغز نريد أن نفكه ألا وهو أن صورة المرأة المسلمة وفي العالم الإسلامي عند الغربي عند المجتمعات الديمقراطية الحقوقية أوروبا أمريكا أنها مظلومة أنها تابعة للرجل أن ليس عندها حرية أن حقوقها نصف حقوق الرجل طيب المرأة الغربية اليوم تدخل في الإسلام أكثر من الرجل الغربي نعم. في أوروبا في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية في أمريكا الشمالية صحيح. أستراليا صحيح. ما هو اللغز؟ ما شاء الله ما شاء الله. What I understood Sheikh you to say is that um, regarding the women and you said three times and the women and the women um, that there is a phenomenon that um, in the West the picture of Muslim women is that they are depressed, they don't have their rights, uh, they, they're not advanced, they're not progressive, uh, they are, are kept inside their home, and they're not involved in the society. Mm. They have to follow their man. And they give this kind of a picture of women in the Muslim world. Yet Muslim women in the West, they're supposed to be free. They're supposed to be having democratic rights. Uh, they're supposed to be progressive. Uh, they're supposed to be liberal. They are open, they can work, they can do everything. Mm. So why are women in the West accepting Islam more than men when such a picture exists? I think this is what you said. Yes, okay. looks, looks so good. alhamdulillah, mashallah. I will give you my experience. I'll give you from my own experience, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, I have seven daughters. Mashallah. I have seven sisters. Mashallah. Uh, and so, from that experience, I can tell you that there is something within the Islamic message that bypasses, again, all of those contradictions. Because when the Qur'an is speaking, the, the Qur'an is speaking to the heart of women. The Qur'an is speaking also to the mentality of women. Islam 
for women is uh, women are to Islam what bread is to the oven. Women are to Islam what bread is to the oven. So women are inclined towards Islam because Islam gives them warmth. Islam gives them value. Mm. Islam gives them spirit. Islam gives them dignity and they can feel it. <coughs> Secondly, when the women hear about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they see a real man, a real man, not muscle man, not rich man, not playboy man, but real man with values, with responsibility, with dignity for his mother, dignity for his wife, dignity Yansin, for his neighbor. And that woman, she want to have a man like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even if we, you and I, we are not like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because we are weak, still that woman prefer a weak one like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than the strong one who don't have that dignity. And so Islam brings dignity to the human being, to the society. And Sheikh, women are like this from my experience. Anyone that protects their children and anyone that gives to them their family value, women, they want that. And so Islam uh, guarantees and protects the dignity of children. And Islam brings back the value of the family. And who is the governess of the family? It is the woman. So those women who sit down and read the Quran and who look at the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if they don't become Muslim, they're respecting the Muslim. This is the phenomena of the Quran. And this is the phenomena of the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whoever Whoever listen carefully about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they see in him real man. And whoever reads the Quran, listen to the Quran, they hear in a dialectic they never heard before. And so it is true, Sheikh. In my experience, I would say that for every man who accepts Islam from my hands, I can say at least two women. Mm. In many cases, three to one. Why? Women normally, they don't have ego. Man, he have ego. If you want to talk to a man, he have lots of kalam. Blah, 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 because his ego. But the woman, no ego. The woman built for submission. The woman is like a cup. You pour, it fill. The man, he's not like cup. The man is upside down. He take. The man, he always taking. Woman, she receiving. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your wives, halthu lakum. Halthu lakum. Huh? So they receive. The man he's taking. So man, he always got lots of talk, 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 talk. But if you sit and talk to a woman, once she accept what you have to say, she accept. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first person to accept Islam is who? Woman. Woman. Khadija. See, when he's just tajr, he's not prophet yet. He's just tajr. She see him. He's young. He's honest. He's energetic. He's smart. She select him. Women like that. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi don't select her. She select him. No, I'm sorry. Okay, also, the first person to help him, first person to help Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his uncle, Abu Talib. Tajir. Mutajir, right? Yes, yes. Okay, the first person to accept Islam from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his wife. She is also what? Businesswoman. So always, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala surround the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with business people. And this is why if a man is a businessman, his wife will usually be loyal. Why? Because the man is giving, uh, what's called it? Nafqa. Nafqa. The man giving, nafqa. The woman, she appreciate. Women are loyal. Women will follow. You don't have to command them. If you have the good example, they will follow. And so I think today, I say to Muslim sisters, if our sisters are confident, if our sisters are smart, if they are educated, if they are strong and they are resourceful, they will be the main line of our da'wah. Why? Because they will get talk to other women and other women will come. And if the women come to Islam, the children will come to Islam. Mm. And if the women and children come to Islam, the men are going to follow. Right. And so this is the phenomena how Islam start in the beginning. And this is the phenomena how Islam is starting now. Wallahu a'lam. أستاذ خالد الإجابة واضحة لكن عندنا إشكال آخر ألا وهو أن العلمانيين العرب والغربيون المستشرقون يطعنون طعونات في الأحكام الشرعية الخاصة في المرأة 
يشككونها مثلا او يرون انها منتقصه الميراث الشهاده الرجل يتزوج اربع الى اخره المسلمات ربما يرتبكنا لكن العجيب العجيب ان الغربيه الامريكيه الاوروبيه تدخل بثقه في الاسلام لماذا لم تتاثر بهذا هذه الشبهات اسمع منك الجواب بعد الفاصل <تصفيق> المفكر الإسلامي الأمريكي خالد ياسين مرة أخرى السؤال يقول لك أن الشبهات والتشكيكات والطعونات في مكانة المرأة في الإسلام التي يتناولها العلمانيون العرب والمستشرقون الغربيون واضحة وكثيرة يتكلمون في تعدد الزوجات يتكلمون في ميراث المرأة يتكلمون في شهادة المرأة يتكلمون في هذا لم يؤثر في الغربيات المسلمات وهن يعلمن بهذا الكلام بينما ربما بعض المسلمات يرتبكنا نعم. ما الذي يجعل المسلم الغربية بهذا اليقين في الدخول وعدم الشوش؟ ما شاء الله. شيخ، this is very good uh, set of questions and we have heard those questions before that um, the the secularist people, the atheistic people, the non-religious people, the uh, the مشتشركين people, the uh, the intellectual people. They're always looking at Islam from the outside. And because they're looking from the outside, they don't see what is inside. So the judgment they make is always wrong. So one example is that they're telling the woman that, look, in the inheritance in the Quran, the inheritance of the woman is only half of that as a man. So you can see this not fair. Mm. But they don't understand that in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is uh, Samuel Alim, uh, mm. they don't understand the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, he give uh, the half of, this, of, the, of, the, of the inheritance to the daughter, to the girl, and uh, give the boy double. Why? Because the girl, she don't have to share this with nobody. It is hers for life. It is only for her. But the boy, he's going to receive double share because he had to take care of his wife and his children and his auntie and his mother and, his, and all the women in his family. So Allah in his hikmah, he gives to the boy more because usually the wealth always wind up with the women. But those other people who don't understand that treasure, they did not see that. Second thing, uh, in the issue of the woman have to cover herself. She have to wear this, she have to wear that. The man, he ain't got the cover and so forth and so on. Because Allah, he know. He make the woman treasure. And you and me, where we would put our money? We'd put in the bank. If I have diamonds and pearls and gold and other things, where I would put it? i put it inside the bank. And where the gold and the diamonds is at? On top of the earth? No, inside the water, inside the mountain. So Allah, he put the treasure, the woman, inside. And he protect them from the outside. 
So Allah in his hikmah, he wants the woman to cover because she is the treasure. If you lose the treasure, you lose everything, the family, the dignity and everything. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives to that treasure, our women, who is worth more than diamonds and more than pearls, more than gold, more than anything. Allah, he wants them to be covered. And so this is the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, when the people, they say, oh, the woman, she cannot work, she can this and so and so, the man, he can do this and so on, and she cannot become imam, she cannot be leader and so and so. No, again, they missing the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there is army, nobody in the world will take female army, female regiment, you see, and male regiment, and put them, nobody in the world will do that. If somebody wants to say woman is equal to the man, okay, good. Tell any European, any intellectual, you bring woman army and put that woman army on the battlefield with male army. They will never do it because they understand the difference. Laysa dhakara kal unfa. So because they don't have the understanding of what is inside, they are speaking from the outside, always they are wrong. Okay. So alhamdulillah, what happens is that when a woman listen to Islam, to the Quran, and she come to know that value, then she come. And this is the phenomena of Islam always. Islam, the spirit of Islam, not from the outside. The spirit of Islam coming from the inside. And so when women come to understand the real value of Islam and the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will come to Islam walau, walau mushtashrikeen, walau yinsim mulhideen, walau the liberalists, okay, or the secularists, walau, they still come into Islam because they taste Islam, they smell Islam, they, they can feel Islam, and whoever can taste and touch and feel and smell something that is beautiful, they want it. Sheikh Yasin, your answer is focused, and if you know, and the viewers know, that there are a lot of details that show the truth of what they have, and that they don't know. Even in the rules of the law, sometimes the woman takes the man, and not takes the man, takes the man, and the man takes the man, and the man takes the man, and the man takes the man. The last question in the last three minutes, ما هي المشكلة الكبيرة التي يمكن أن نحلها لكي يفهمنا الغرب ويفهم الإسلام صح ويقبل عليه؟ ما شاء الله شيخ I think today because success today in the minds of people is outward success the people they don't understand inner success this why they lose their family they lose their identity they lose their morals they lose everything just to gamble, to drink and to dance in the so-and-so mm -hmm. because they have no value inside. So if you want to convince the people of the West, don't deal with the inside issues. They will come to that later. We must compete with them in science. We must compete with them in education. We must compete with them in business. We must compete with them in, in family, in society. We must produce things, products and services. Today, the world is following products and services, not ideas, products and services. Wallahi, we have the ideas, we have the iman. But you look to the Muslim world, no products, no services. Everything we're using is somebody else's product, somebody else's service. We must compete with them, okay, in products and services. We must compete with them in the development. We must compete with them in our behavior. They must understand Islam from our behavior. They must come to love us. If I treat my friend, if I treat my neighbor like he's my friend, even though maybe he's not my friend, but I treat him like he's my friend. After some time, he will become like friend to me. He will become dependent upon me. If I say to my neighbor, the snow is in the ground, I say to him, I, will sh I shovel my snow and I shovel his snow. If I have machine, you know, snow machine, he don't have, he's shoveling, he's shoveling. I have snow machine. I tell him, no, you don't need to do that. I take care of that for you. Mm. Even he don't like me, but I still do that for him. So he will say to himself and his family, what this man? He cleaned the snow, he know I don't like him. Voila, we smile to them, they frown at us. We smile at them. <laughs> like Rasulullah <laughs> Even they speak bad words to us, no, we don't speak bad words to them. If they curse us, we don't curse them. Okay, if they mistreat us, we never mistreat them. We deal with them with, in good way. We have good manners. We are honest with them. We are generous with them. As the Prophet said, uh, let him who believes in Allah in the last day, 
either say what's good or keep quiet. Yes. And let him who believes in Allah on the last day be generous to his guest. And let him who believes in Allah on the last day be generous towards his neighbor. Because at the end of the day, the dawah is not led with words. The dawah is led by behavior. What's the look? We have to lead by behavior. Secondly, when the Messenger of Allah entered Medina, the first words of dawah he gave was not come to Allah, believe in his Messenger Sallallahu No, it was tut'imu ta'am wa taqra'u salam man arafta wa man lam ta'rif. Why he gave that word? Because it's important for us to invite people to eat with us. Because if somebody eat with me, he will come to know me. Secondly, wa taqra'u salam and give the good greetings to everybody. Not greetings to the Muslim, not greetings to your friend, not greetings to your countrymen, but greetings to your neighbor, to your colleague, to your friend, to the people in your class, to people in your neighborhood, to your, to your co-worker. Be the first one on the job and greet them. Make the coffee before they get there. Always be nice to the people. And, من عرفت ومن لم تعرف سلم على من تعرف ومن لا تعرف سبحان الله أستاذ خالد كلامك جميل وإن شاء الله تكون الرسالة وصلت للمسلمين وللمقصرين شكرا لك استمتعنا لا شكرا على وجب على وجب الله يبارك فيكم إن شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله